Hey y'all, my 3D printer doesn't do what it's supposed to do, and no matter what I do, it doesn't listen to me. But I don't think the printer is the problem. It's the way it interacts with me, which is only via slice files. So today I will make it interact with me in real time. Alright, here we have this video's test work team, now we just need to make it listen to us and move as we talk. For that we're gonna make a new .NET 8 console application and start coding. <coughs> well, turns out we need N audio to work with audio in general. And we can use WASC for the speech recognition. For that we will download a small US English model which contains a whole lot of well-known English words. Now let's quickly set up some basic functions and see if it's really that easy. Test. Hello. Fork. Alright, turns out Wask works with 16 kHz mono audio and my mic provides stereo 48 kHz. Let's use N audio to convert it in real time. Surely this will work now. Okay, after a couple of code changes, I finally got it to work. Hello, my name is Roman. Please move 10 centimeters to the left. I'm a fucking genius. Now I just added preferred words so that it for example uses the word start if it only picks up star. That means I can speak less clearly and still get the keywords right. For that I quickly coded an algorithm to find out the Levenstein distance between the detected word and every preference word in the list. If it's a close match we use the preference word instead of the detected one. But how does that even work? Let me introduce you to Vladimir Levenstein. He's the man that is responsible for all the wrong autocorrected messages that you get from your parents. He invented the Levenstein distance which is a way to measure how different two words are. Think of it as counting the number of small fixes you need to turn one word into another. These fixes can be insertions, deletions and substitutions. For example, turning cat into bat takes one substitution. Turning cat into cats takes one insertion. Turning cat into ad takes one deletion. The Levenstein distance is the total of those fixes. If you for example type hello, the autocorrect will most likely suggest hello because it's only one insertion. Now that you have that sorted, let's proceed with getting the instructions to the printer. But Roman, I hear you say, how does the printer even understand you? I'm getting to that, but first let's talk about this video sponsor JLC 3DP. If you don't have a 3D printer yet or just don't want to bother with stuff like this or this, and just want an affordable but flawless 3D print, go visit jlc3dp.com. JLC3DP offers services with different 3D printing technologies, capable of printing thermoplastics, resins or even metal parts. Just upload your part, choose the right technology and get an instant quote. But that's not all. JLC3DP also offers CNC machining and custom PCB manufacturing. If you need additional parts for your projects, you can also order a whole lot of mechatronic parts on the website too. 
You can find the link to the website in the description, so make sure to check out JLC 3DP if you need custom parts for your next project. To get clear instructions, we need to further process the detected text. For that, we could just search for keywords or over engineer the shit out of it and train our own machine learning model and use natural language processing to predict what we want the printer to do. Is it necessary? Nope. Is it fun? Absolutely. So let's use ChatGPT to make a dataset to train our model. The dataset basically consists of many, many different variants to tell the printer what to do. Like, for example, hey, can you please print 10 centimeters to the left? Or, we need to print a 10 centimeter line to the left, which should both result in print 10 centimeters left. Now that we have the dataset ready, let's quickly throw together some code in a new project to train a model which we then can use in our main application. Surely this will work first try, right? Well, guess who needs some more training data? After adding an additional 7000 lines to the training dataset, it somewhat works now. This turned out to be much harder than I thought. And finally, we need some code in the main application to process the given input with the language model. In theory, we should now be able to give instructions to move on each axis and to print lines, angles and circles. And some other stuff like leveling, heating, speed and fan control. Yeah, I'm sure this will work first try, right? Please level yourself. Please home. Can you print 10 centimeters to the left? Please move 10 centimeters to the back. Okay, turns out I suck at programming and turns out training an own AI model isn't remotely as fun as I thought two days ago. Don't get me wrong, it's very interesting and I learned a lot and it's actually fun to do. But waiting 20 minutes for a model to train to just find out you have to change something and doing this over and over and over again doesn't fit my time schedule for this video. I will surely give this another try in the next project without a strict time schedule, but for now I admit defeat. This is the worst! So after about a day of fiddling around with the trainer settings and dataset just to still get only 56% validation accuracy, I decided to just move on and use JetGPT API calls because JetGPT is a whole lot smarter than my AI model and my whole existence. So yeah, let's do it the simple way and use AI that already exists. It was actually very simple to code this. I just had to make a somewhat clear developer prompt with instructions on how to handle the input and output. And now I can send my detected voice messages to ChatGPT and get a formatted command in return. Let's talk about communicating with the printer. In theory, it's easy, I just need to plug the printer into my PC and open a serial connection to send whatever I want. The only problem is I kinda don't speak G-code and the printer doesn't understand English. So let's fix that. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the G-code interpreter. Its only task is to take the generated comments and somehow translate them into good old G-code. This is pretty simple, because we can just check the main comment, like for example print, and then further process it correspondingly. Now the last thing to do is to open a serial port and send the g-code to the printer. Easy as that, so I would say, let's fucking test this thing. Hey printer, can you please home yourself? Okay, now please level yourself. Now please home again. Could you please move 10 centimeters up? Now please move 10 centimeters to the left.
could you maybe move 5 cm to the back? Please heat the nozzle to 220 degrees. Can you print a 5 cm line to the back left at the 30 degree angle? Please print 10 cm to the right. Please print a 2 cm circle. Ok, this seems to work somewhat reliably. The only observation I made after some further testing is that the voice recognition seems to work better if I swear. I have no idea where this comes from, but if I for example say print a 10 cm line to the left, it often recognizes wrong words, but if I swear and for example say print a fucking 10 cm line to the left what the actual fuck, it kind of always works. I mean I can live with that. I guess I didn't build a voice controlled 3D printer, but a swear controlled 3D printer. Which, when thinking about it, is actually a hilarious side effect. Ok, now let's try to actually print something. Please print 5 cm to the left. Now please print 10 cm to the back. Please print 10 cm to the right. Please print 10 cm to the front. Please print 10 cm to the front. Please print 10 cm to the left. Ok, as you can see it doesn't really work that well. Part of the problem is the stopping after each line, it forms a blob and then doesn't extrude very well at the start of the next line. And this also results in ripping the line off of the build plate when moving over it in the next layer. We could solve the problem by for example adding a buffer that saves the comments until layer change and print them afterwards. And then do a retract at layer change. But anyways. It is clear to me that this method of 3D printing has no real use case, so I will not further develop it because there is no purpose to do that. Nobody's gonna sit next to the 3D printer and tell him what to do just to print a cube in 2 hours. This was a fun little side project I wanted to try and it serves as a base for a future project I have in mind. I have plans to build onto it to print basic stuff just by telling it what the object should look like. This however will be in another video. So see this as a base functionality to build upon and stay tuned for the update on it. That's it for now. I'm very sorry for wasting your time. If you nevertheless liked the video, you can leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.